Let's start with the flashbacks first. One night, a mysterious man broke into a parked car and his actions were seen by a delivery guy. The next day, that man with the car he stole came to the elementary school and followed one of the students home, intending to kidnap him, but luckily, he failed because the boy kept running until he met his mother. Sadly, that night, the mysterious man managed to kidnap a girl named So Jin. Her head was covered and her whole body was taped, then she was put in a box. So Jin's mother was a widow named Ha Kyung. The kidnapper asked for a ransom worth $50,000 if she wanted her daughter back. As proof that So Jin was still alive, Ha Kyung was ordered to check the contents of the garbage truck that would soon pass in front of her house where the kidnapper put So Jin's photo somewhere inside it next to a TV and Ha Kyung could only cry, thinking about the fate of her only daughter. Ha Kyung finally went with the ransom for his daughter to the place determined by the kidnapper, namely at New Met Yongsen Station, a station that was always used as transit by soldiers. Ha Kyung was asked to put the money into a military backpack and put it on one of the pillars there. At that time, the detectives and police had already spread out because Ha Kyung had secretly reported the case of her daughter's kidnapping, and they were going to raid the kidnapper. But the police asked Ha Kyung to put fake money in the backpack, while the real money was kept in her house. On the other hand, the kidnapper was already prepared. He disguised himself as a soldier and put papers into his military backpack because he knew the police were on guard and changing the bag containing the ransom money could buy him time to escape. Not long after the train arrived, the station was filled with soldiers who had just returned from duty, clearly an unexpected that made it difficult for the detectives to monitor the person who took the backpack. The kidnapper immediately exchanged his backpack for the backpack containing the money and escaped from there before the detectives knew. The failure of the detectives to catch the perpetrator made the police chief mad. Meanwhile, Ha Kyung, who was left alone in her house, suddenly got a call from the kidnapper and Ha Kyung promised that this time she would obey all the kidnapper's orders for the sake of her daughter's safety. She was ordered to deliver the real money to a dark, deserted road on the edge of a river. She was then asked to reset the distance her car had traveled, turn off the lights in the engine, and cover her head with a plastic bag. At the same time, Chung Ho, one of the detectives who helped to ambush the kidnapper that day was worried about Ha Kyung's condition and immediately returned to Ha Kyung's house only to find nobody there. Luckily, there was still a voice recording device belonging to the police there and Chun Ho knew where Ha Kyung was from her conversation with the kidnapper. He then asked the police unit to come help but they were being deployed for another emergency case and he had no other choice but to catch the kidnapper alone. Just when Chun Ho saw Ha Kyung's car and her head was covered in plastic, he was surprised to see So Jin suddenly fly in front of his car. The kidnapper, with his ruthlessness, deliberately dropped the little girl from the top of the cliff. Chum Ho braked suddenly so he didn't hit her while sending his car overturned. Ha Kyung heard the commotion and immediately removed the plastic bag on her head and slowly walked toward her daughter's corpse. That was when the kidnapper took the real $50,000 inside Ha Kyung's car. Chum Ho saw it couldn't do anything because he was still trapped inside the car. Ha Kyung was devastated when she saw her daughter who had died and was covered in wounds. She cried and screamed hysterically seeing the tragedy. Fifteen years later, Detective Chung Ho and his colleague Young Sik came to Hae Kyung's apartment to inform her that the case of her daughter's kidnapping would be closed in a few days according to the regulations in Korea, which considered a case to be expired if it reached the time limit of exactly 15 years. Hearing this, Hae Kyung was hysterical, because whoever the perpetrator was must be found who tried. So far, Hae Kyung had been collecting clues, starting from articles, all of the kidnapper's voice recordings when he kidnapped her daughter, to sketches of the kidnapper's face, However, until now, the kidnapper was never found because of the lack of clues. After that, as usual, Ha Kyung came to a tree where her daughter's grave was. Ha Kyung laid flowers and changed her daughter's shoes regularly there, while Detective Chung was still contemplating what he should do with the location of Ha Kyung's daughter, thrown from a cliff and died 15 years ago until finally, Chum Ho was surprised to see a flower on the side of the road. At first, he thought the person who put them was Ha Kyung in memory of her daughter, but that wasn't the case, which meant that the kidnapper had reappeared and deliberately put the flower there. Chum Ho immediately checked the CCTV on the street and saw the kidnapper wearing a hoodie, putting the flower in the early morning. He also happened to look at the CCTV. Chum Ho and Yang Sik immediately checked the hills in the direction the kidnapper came from, and they found new car tire marks at the same place where the kidnapper left his car 15 years ago. Chun Ho began to analyze why the kidnapper parked in that place, how long it took to walk from there to the flower, and the kidnapper's motive. After that, they continued looking for cars that passed by at that time and had a dash cam, but when checked, it turned out that the kidnapper had removed his car's front number plate. After finding out the brand of the kidnapper's car, they began checking the same car brands one by one that had the same tire pattern, but of course, it took a lot of time. Luckily, 
When Chung Ho went back to check the dashcam footage, he saw a sticker on the windshield of the kidnapper's car. Nine hours before the case expired, Chung Ho saw a car park in front of him that had the same sticker and tire pattern. Soon after, he also saw a suspicious man with a black umbrella in the distance, and he immediately chased him until he entered the market area. Sadly, he lost track of the man, but he knew that the kidnapper must have entered one of the shop houses there, so he checked each shop house there one by one. Then, when he entered a restaurant, he saw a man wearing a raincoat reading a newspaper to cover his face. He slowly approached him when suddenly, Young Sik came to call him. The kidnapper realized it and made a commotion to buy some time for him to run away. On that occasion, the kidnapper ran away into the market and ran into Hei Kyung, who also happened to be there. Chung Ho tried to chase, but unfortunately, the kidnapper managed to escape using his car. Chung Ho tried to remember the rear number plate of the car, but it turned out that the plate attached was a stolen plate. He didn't know what else to do because the case only had less than two hours to expire, and he could only advise Hei Kyung to let go of everything that happened 15 years ago. Because the case had expired, Chum Ho finally burned all the clues he had collected for the past 15 years. After that, Chum Ho got a voice message from Hei Kyung who needed information from the list of names he had gathered, but he ignored it because he was too tired and had given up since the case had also expired. Chum Ho also decided to resign from the police because he felt like he had failed as a detective. A few weeks later, an old man named Han was seen accompanying his granddaughter Bom to play on a swing. Not long after, his house phone rang and he went in to pick it up, but the phone went dead when he was about to pick it up repeatedly, until finally he heard Bom screaming. He panicked and immediately looked for her, but unfortunately, she had gone. Bom's mother immediately reported the police and detectives came in disguise to investigate. Among them were Detective Kang, Detective Choi, and the lead detective, Kwok. Because they were very sure that the kidnapper must be lurking while monitoring them, the detectives communicated with Han by telephone to show him where his granddaughter was. At that time, Han heard a cell phone ring in the bushes near the park bench, and when he picked it up, it was Bom. Han immediately waved at the camera, but unfortunately, the detectives were discussing to determine the next step, and no one saw him. Through the telephone booth, the kidnapper called Han's house, which was immediately picked up by Bom's mother while all the detectives there heard the conversation. The kidnapper warned her not to report to the police or her daughter would be killed. She was asked to prepare $50,000 in cash tomorrow morning and later she would be given further information. After the call ended, Bom's mother fainted from shock and when the female detective checked her condition, it was seen that there were surgical scars on her chest. Quack immediately ordered one of them to call Han because his daughter had fainted only to find that Han had disappeared and his cell phone was left on the swing. The detective finally managed to track down the kidnapper's location, namely at a telephone booth in a very quiet area. There were no eyewitnesses and the fingerprints had also been cleaned, only leaving a cigarette butt there and a strand of hair that was immediately sent to the forensic team. After that, the detectives continued discussing a Han's home and Kang realized that there was something odd. When the kidnapper called, it was all noisy, while the location they managed to track down was a telephone booth that was far from the main road, and that did make sense. The officer who tracked the location confirmed that there was indeed a caller at the same time at the quiet telephone booth with the call duration being the same too. Quack immediately ordered Kang to look for old cases that were similar to this case and asked all his subordinates to work quickly, because a child's life was at stake. That night, the kidnapper called Bom's mother again and showed proof that her daughter was still alive. Bom's mother was told to check the incoming dump truck that would pass in front of the house and inside, there would be Bom's photo next to a TV, the same as what happened to Hak Kyung 15 years ago. Not long after that, Kang, who was still on duty, called Kwok because he remembered a case that happened 15 years ago, which was very similar to the current case. Then, when he arrived at the police station, he immediately looked for the case files from 15 years ago, but there was only an empty box with only a sketch of the kidnapper's face left. From that sketch, Kang found out that the detective who handled the case 15 years ago was Chung Ho. So the next day, he immediately came to meet Chung Ho at his residence. After Kang told him the chronology of the case, which was very similar to Chung Ho's previous case, Chung Ho was shocked and immediately took out his files that weren't burned completely because it was exposed to rain that he kept. Chum Ho was sure that the perpetrator was the same person and he was a maniac who wanted to perfect his crime after his criminal case was abolished 15 years ago. Chum Ho also told what happened next, that the kidnapper would ask for the ransom to be put in military backpack and placed in the exact same location during the day. Turned out Chum Ho's theory was correct. Not long afterward, the kidnapper asked Bom's mother to put the money in a military backpack and then put it at Yongsen Station on a pillar that had been determined. On the day the ransom was handed over, according to Chung Ho, Kang immediately boarded the train before arriving at Yongsen Station. 
Chum Ho said that if a kidnapper had used the same method, he might have boarded the train right at one station before Yongsen. Chum Ho then saw a soldier sitting alone and got into the train. Kang immediately reported it to Kwok saying that he was on the train while Kwok and the other detectives were already on standby at Yongsen station. Bom's mother had also put the backpack containing money and a tracker that was secretly put inside. Not long after the train arrived at Yongsen station, the soldiers started to come out and as soon as the bags were exchanged, the entire police unit was deployed to close all the exits. Meanwhile, Chum Ho asked Kang to go in another direction because he had analyzed what happened 15 years ago. The kidnapper would run away under the train car to the other way. It turned out that Chum Ho's theory was correct. After the kidnapper took out the tracking device in his bag and crushed it, he immediately ran towards the tracks. Seeing the kidnapper in the distance, Chum Ho and Kang continued to chase him. Fortunately, they managed to catch him, who turned out to be Han. Han was immediately arrested. Han explained what really happened. That day, Bomb got kidnapped, Han received a call from a cell phone in the bushes. The kidnapper ordered him to go to a warehouse and put his cell phone in the car. Not long after that, Han heard Bomb screaming for the warehouse. Without thinking twice, Han immediately entered the warehouse. However, it turned out that it was just a recording of Bomb. The kidnapper suddenly closed the warehouse door and left him in there. Han didn't even know how long he had been locked up in there. At that time, Han felt weak and thought that he would be killed, until one day the warehouse door opened. He immediately went to his car and found a message from the kidnapper on a piece of paper. Han was ordered to wear a military uniform and go to the location according to the GPS at 3 p.m. and if he was late, Bomb would be killed. Detective Kang, who was interrogating Han, gave him a cigarette to calm him down. From the surveillance room, Kwok asked where the cell phone that Han found in the bush was. Han said that the kidnapper ordered him to throw away the cell phone. Then Han also told him that the kidnapper would release Bomb if he managed to throw the money bag over the fence, but unfortunately, he didn't succeed in throwing it, was quickly caught. At that moment when Han put out his cigarette, Kwok saw something odd because the cigarette butt he left was the same as the condition of the cigarette butt found in the telephone booth. At that moment, Kwok ordered Choi and his men to search Han's old house. There, Choi found a TV with the exact same wall wallpaper as in the photo of Bomb's kidnapping. Meanwhile, at the police station, Kang, who was chatting with Bomb's mother, asked why she only arrived home at 11 a.m., and why she only reported to the police at 3 p.m. even though the kidnapping occurred at 10 a.m. Bomb's mother said that at that time she was working and immediately went home as soon as her father told her that Bomb had disappeared so she only arrived at 11 a.m. Meanwhile, the reason why she only reported it at 3 p.m. was because Han forbade her from reporting it to the police, while saying that the involvement of the police would make things even more complicated. At that time, Han said that maybe the kidnapper would call and if they worked together, Bomb would return safely. In the middle of their conversation, Bomb's father had just arrived from work out of the city and Kang increasingly suspected that Han was the real kidnapper. Because many irregularities and evidence were found such as his DNA that matched the strand of hair that was found, the mashed cigarette butt, and the delay report to the police regarding the kidnapping of his granddaughter, the police agreed that Han was indeed the perpetrator, but even with that much evidence, Han kept denying that he was the kidnapper. Kang and Choi finally forced Han to admit all his actions, but Han still didn't budge. He even fell to his knees crying and begged the police to find the kidnapper because he was not the kidnapper. On the other hand, Chum Ho expressed his opinion that the evidence in Han's arrest felt odd and too patterned, starting from Han who still insisted on throwing his bag over the fence, even though they had ambushed him. The perpetrator was too careful to leave a cigarette butt, and the strangest thing was that the perpetrator must have been wearing gloves, so it could be concluded that the perpetrator deliberately cleaned all the fingerprints in the booth and put Han's cigarette butt as well as a strand of his hair there meaning the real kidnapper wanted the police not to bother investigating and immediately focused on Han. Chum Ho also thought that maybe while they were arresting Han at the station, the kidnapper was waiting behind the fence to take the money, but Kang said it was clear that Han was the kidnapper and denied everything Chum Ho said. After that, Chum Ho tried to look for clues by investigating the warehouse where Han was being held and found a damaged cassette tape. He immediately took it to be analyzed by a man named Jiju. It turned out that it was a recording of Bomb calling her grandfather. Giju immediately realized that there was a very small voice in the recording which when the volume was increased, was the voice of the perpetrator who told Bomb to call Han. At the police station, some journalists were waiting for Han who was about to be taken to the prison. They asked where his own granddaughter was, but Han shouted that he was innocent and had been framed. When arrived at the police station, Chum Ho tried to explain to Quack that Han's motive was not clear, but Quack thought that the main motive must be money. 
There was no uproar about it yet, so if the kidnapper had not immediately shown to the public, many sectors of the city's economy would have declined because people were afraid. Chum Ho was furious when he heard it because the evidence found was not strong enough. The real kidnapper must still be free and the most important thing was where was the bomb, a quack ignored Chum Ho's words, which were considered too far-fetched. The police had also assumed that Bomb died because he was killed by her own grandfather and so far her body hadn't been found. The argument became increasingly heated until finally, Chum Ho was thrown out of the room. After that, Kang provided evidence that showed that Han was indeed the kidnapper, namely Han's voice which had a 99.4% match with the kidnapper's voice at the telephone booth. Chum Ho secretly copied the voice recordings and took them to Giju to check the kidnapper's current voice recordings with the one from 15 years ago. After waiting for a long time, the results of the analysis were complete and Giju found many oddities. All of the kidnappers' current voice recordings were the exact same words as the one from 15 years ago. In other words, the kidnapper's voice was not a real one but a recorded voice from 15 years ago. Giju was very sure of this because the kidnapper's voice sounded a bit rustled, while the sound in the background sounded very clear. There was also a clicking sound which meant that the kidnapper used the sound from a voice recorder. During the action of kidnapping Bomb, the kidnapper's sound sounded cracked and lower because the cassette tape that was kept for 15 years would lose its quality. Chen Ho finally understood that the kidnapper of 15 years ago was indeed Han, while the current kidnapper was Ha Kyun who wanted revenge because she still had all the voice recordings of the kidnapper of her daughter, Aka Han. Chum Ho's suspicions became stronger when he heard the voice message Ha Kyung sent to him the day So Jin's case expired. In the voice message, Ha Kyung mentioned Han's name. Turned out, after So Jin's case expired, Ha Kyung tried to find the kidnapper alone. She saw Chum Ho chasing the kidnapper at the market that day, so she looked for information from the people around and found out that the initial commotion occurred at the restaurant. There, she found the kidnapper's umbrella with the logo of a bank on it. At that time, she immediately went to the bank and it turned out that the umbrella was a souvenir item, given specifically to the bank's VIP clients. Therefore, she bribed the bank staff to give her the list of the VIP clients. From the list she got, Hei Kyung immediately summarized, but because Chum Ho didn't pick up her phone call, she delivered a voice message and asked for information on all the names she mentioned. Unfortunately, Chum Ho ignored her voice message, so she decided to find the people from the list one by one, but she still couldn't find anything until finally, she went to the next name on the list whose house was near the river, but because there was no one in the house, she immediately entered and checked the contents of the room. There she found a photo album that looked like a girl in the hospital. Then she was so shocked by the calendar there because all the dates were crossed out except for July 19th, which was the expiry date for So Jin's case. She was very sure that the old house was the kidnapper's house. Not long after, the kidnapper came and just sat in front of the house. He Kyung, who was very emotional, intended to stab him with a knife she found, but she couldn't do that because she wasn't a murderer. Soon after, someone came to pick up Han and Ha Kyung saw everything from the door gap. It hurt her so much to see Han live happily with his daughter and granddaughter, while she had to live alone, tormented for 15 years by losing her only daughter and justice was not on her side, therefore she decided to frame Han with her own hands using exactly the same method as he did, namely by kidnapping his granddaughter, Bam. After getting information about the location of Ha Kyung's new apartment, Chun Ho immediately came to her. There, Ha Kyung was seen taking care of Bam. Ha Kyung was surprised by Chun Ho's arrival. She said that she suffered every day because she remembered So Jin, while Han lived happily with his family, and that she wanted to avenge her daughter's death. Chum Ho couldn't accept what Ha Kyung had done and planned to take Bom back to her mother, but Ha Kyung immediately stopped him because what she wanted was for Han to regret and admit what he had done. She cried and begged Chun Ho so that he would help her. Ha Kyung promised to return Bom when Han was officially in prison. Chun Ho still took Bom with him, but she would be hidden first in his house. Chun Ho then met Han in prison, who would soon undergo a trial process. Without further ado, Chum Ho asked why Han had the heart to do such a cruel thing 15 years ago while showing a sketch of his face. Chum Ho said that the sketch was based on the testimony of someone who caught him breaking into a car. The sketch wasn't very similar because the distance was quite far and it was raining, making it difficult for the police and detectives to find him. Chum Ho, who had done an investigation, concluded that Han's true motive was motive. His daughter had a heart defect and he, who had no money, finally decided to kidnap So Jin so he could use Ha Kyung's ransom money for the cost of his daughter's surgery. His daughter managed to survive and even had a daughter. But on the other hand, Ha Kyung suffered because she lost her only daughter. Han remembered the fateful incident that night. It turned out that Han did not kill So Jin. At that time, Han intended to exchange So Jin for Ha Kyung's ransom money, but So Jin, who was carrying a pen, 
immediately stabbed him in the face and tried to escape from there. So Jim, who was scared, kept running until she stumbled upon a log and finally fell off the cliff. While crying, Chum Ho said how much Ha Kyung had been hurt for 15 years due to Han's actions. Chum Ho asked why Han put the flower on the street and had the time to bow his head. Han tried to tell him that he didn't kill So Jin and he only wanted the ransom money for his daughter's treatment. If So Jin hadn't run away that night, the situation would be different. The reason he laid that flower was a form of penance for his sins. Han told Chung Ho what it felt like to raise a child who was on the verge of death due to an illness. As a parent, he would be willing to do anything to save his child even if he had to do things that are beyond the limits, but Chung Ho didn't care about all of that and told him that if Han wanted his granddaughter to be safe, he had to admit his actions and his confession would be recorded, saying that Han was indeed the kidnapper 15 years ago and he was also kidnapped his own granddaughter. So for the safety of Bomb, Han finally complied with Chung Ho's request. Long story short, at the trial, all the evidence was shown, including the recorded confession. Han was sentenced to 15 years in prison on charges of kidnapping and murder which caused an uproar all over Korea. After that, Chung Ho returned Bomb to her mother. The mysterious kidnapping case from 15 years ago was finally. Before Bomb was returned, it was shown that Hae Kyum took good care of her because Bomb always reminded her of So Jin. At the end of the film, Hae Kyum, who had avenged So Jin's death, returned to So Jin's grave and hugged the tree there with a very peaceful feeling. 